Say hello to Jan Arden, oh. everyone. Oh. Are you well? Um, Mrs. Some people name records, uh, they just put titles of records for whatever reason, and some people name the records something because it means something free. <laughs> I, you, just, you just look really comfortable. I am. I'm very comfortable when I talk to you. You're I know, very I just, I get with. up here and I'm just like, I don't, I, I'm, and then I just saw you. Yeah, and it was like just... that. But Lena, you can do that, Rock. <laughs> Yes, free. You keep it up, uh, no, I'm that's sit on your that, lap. that. I'm um, not going to do that. <laughs> I, no, because free is a it's a strong word. It's probably a word that's been used to the point ad nauseum. But it, I really thought that that's the feeling of this record. It's just moving on, new producer, new management, um, completely new musicians, and um, I, ju I just like the what it what it suggests. Just a, a liberation and, and uh, moving forward. Is it something you have, or is it something that you're aspiring to have? I knew this would start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's always an aspiration. I don't, I don't know if it's something that you have. I think that was a really hard question to start so early on. <laughs> Well, uh, listen, Darla, you've been on the show before. You know what this is. I have. No, I, it, it's always, I always am happy with what I have. Mm -hmm. I really am. I'm very surprised that I have what I have. Do you know what I mean? Sure. But, but why? Like, what, what, I mean, especially as we get older, we have moments to reflect. Do you become more nostalgic as you get older? Oh, I'm getting terrible. I mean, I can sit and um, look at my f foot for two hours and go, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed that one nail was like that. <laughs> And, oh my God, what's it going to look like after I die and you know, like, take the foot? I hope no one steals the foot. I wonder what my parents are going to do with my body if I die before them. And Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, but I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's not nostalgic. That's something else. That's not nostalgic. <laughs> no, I'm not very nostalgic. No? I'm, I'm, uh, I don't think I'm terribly sentimental either. I'm, I'm quite practical. And uh, I definitely don't live looking behind me. My dad always said, you are not what you did, you are what you will do. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking forward and, and trying to figure out what makes me happy and what makes me tick, none of which I have any clue at this point. <laughs> but I think that's okay, too. The part of the human condition is not knowing a th single thing. What's the process like for you to get the sound in your head out onto a recording? Very um, challenging. But uh, having said that, it's one of the most joyous, um, fulfilling th aspects of, of what I do. I, I love to record. The stage is certainly not my life. I get really nervous. and I mean, I'm nervous now. My heart's going about 300 beats a minute, but I'm trying to just breathe. But, but okay, now, not that everybody needs to your, know your medical details, but don't you have, and I, I don't mean this in the country and Western I'm medicated right, right yeah. now. But, <laughs> Don't you have something I, that's I don't called... even know who you are. <laughs> you, have a, you have a not in a country and western sort of sense, but you have a broken heart. I do. I was diagnosed many, many years ago. I have a very good heart. It's just kind of a weird heart. When I was 20, I got a pacemaker because it, it was going so slow, but it was kind of misdiagnosed. So for 17 years, I had like a hockey puck in my chest. They took that out nine years ago because they just didn't feel it was doing anything. And I was setting alarms off at Sears on a regular basis. <laughs> no, seriously, I have a pacemaker. Security! You know, it was just like very difficult. So anyways, in the last few years, I've, they've had, I was diagnosed with something called broken heart syndrome. It's called Takosubo. And age, aged uh, Japanese widows mainly get it, which I have so much in common. <laughs> They're still trying to figure it out. They, they initially th thought that I was having little heart attacks, but it was just my ventricle going crazy, and they don't know why. And, and uh, I think from the time I was 20, I was, I was kind of a fatalist because it was very unexpected. I didn't think I had anything wrong with me. And... Uh, I remember the, the doctor telling me to hop up on the table to get the pacemaker, and then I was afraid to turn my neck 
uh, after the surgery for about six months because there was a cable that they ran down into your heart. And I always vi envisioned it kind of ripping through one of my arteries. I'm really enjoying this interview so far. <laughs> You, anyway... Do you need a hug? I... <laughs> but I, you know, people, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing terrible. I do, I, t I take beta blockers now, which are magical little drugs. They just sort of keep my heart from, you know, racing off without me. But I'm really very healthy, other than <laughs> the odd heart attack. <laughs> and, uh... But I think it gives you an interesting perspective on your day. You just have Absolutely. a different relationship with it, don't you? Absolutely. I'm very respectful of it and how many times it goes. And I can tell you what it's doing any time of the day or night. And it can be a bit maddening, but it can also be very, it really keeps you in a moment. You can't get too far ahead of yourself or too far behind yourself. It's like, here I am. Humor is a defense mechanism, Mrs. What do you think of that? Oh, it's absolutely true. Humor is a great defense mechanism. I mean, if you can go into a room and kind of purposely draw attention to yourself before someone has the chance to say something to you of a derogatory nature. You've, you've kind of beat them at their own game. I, don't, I just think it's the same. Humor is exactly the same thing as tragedy. I, I think that's why slapstick humor has been so enduring over the years. I mean, I love seeing people trip <laughs> and getting hit with boards and falling off of stuff. And When did you first figure out how to harness that, how to harness that power in a room? You know, I, I think it really was just being in a very small school in Springbank, Alberta. You know, I was, it's always hard going to a new school when you're nine. It's like, oh boy, all my, my lifelong friends that I had for over two years <laughs> are gone now. And I think you just, I, I liked being the class clown and I liked humor. I'd, I'd much rather hear people laugh than, than uh, cry. For, absolutely, I'm sure everyone feels the same way. but. Uh, I just, I found it so rewarding. It was like a, a mouse hitting a little red button to get a treat. Mm -hmm. And that's what laughter feels like to me, much, much more so than music, which I find very ironic. Well, then I wondered for you what it was like when recognizing that that, I mean, that's a, a great way to approach your life. And then when you sit down and you get the songs out of your head onto recording, they're not all funny songs. In fact, None of them are. Right, you're making people, some people, it touches them in a different way. So that's a neat balance to try to strike. Mm -hmm. oh, I think as a public person though the, the, polar the polarity is a little more obvious but like I said the, the, the humor and the tragedy part of things they're so closely knit that you'd be hard-pressed to find where one begins and ends. Um, I mean when people the, cl the cliches of oh I died laughing or I killed myself laughing they're all funny little things that we say all the time and it's the same in every language there's very similar sayings in most language that you die laughing mm -hmm. so the, the pain and the pleasure are very very intertwined and they are in all aspects of our lives I think um, before we uh, we get into the Twitter war uh, tell me about your family because uh, that's a song about your old man too I do yeah um, I'm very close to my my folks I have two older brothers and or one older brother sorry one younger brother and I'm in the middle so I have typical middle child syndrome but my uh, parents live 50 feet from me so I have my own personal 7-eleven <laughs> mom do you have pork chops you know it's just like yes would you like ground lean <laughs> or you know what it's just it's very lovely having them there they're in their early 70s and I have 14 acres and my mom says she's the gatekeeper and... You, on your Twitter page, I want to talk about Twitter because you do post a lot about your life. Some stuff is just whatever, you're having fun. But you say some serious stuff. You ready to go through some of your posts and you can I'm, explain them? I've, I've never felt better. All right. <laughs> uh, this is about your family. My dad tilts to the left when he's ready to pass a bit of wind. He makes sure you're watching. He does. <laughs> That was uh, 4.58 p.m. on October the 3rd. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. My mother will say, I regret ever buying him that leather chair. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's literally a, it's one of these. It's kind of like how you sit yep. on there. <laughs> how about this one? Um, I just used the plunger in my washroom, don't ask. <laughs> 6 09 p.m. November 29th. Yes. Um, well, what had happened was I no, it's it's nothing terrible. <laughs> I was going to put on a new roll of toilet paper onto my thing, and the one that I was taking off had maybe you know uh, 
teeny bit, like yeah. 10 sheets. It's and when I was doing that, you're not sure yes, if it's enough. and it went into the toilet and then I panicked because I thought, I'm not fishing that out. And so I flushed and then it all went to hell. Because <laughs> the cardboard didn't know what to do and I just, so I plunged and I did end up eventually getting a rubber glove because it wouldn't go down and I had to pull it out. But it was just, that's fame, that's fame. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm gonna, uh, there's one that you posted on October the 14th at 4.48 p.m. Either this is literal or not literal. If it's mm -hmm. literal, I don't want the answer. Okay. But if it's not literal, I want the answer. Okay. I once sneezed out a tampon. <laughs> is that literal? I don't want I the really answer. have no comment. Okay, no <laughs> You, you can pick. This on it. I know, but it's just a moment in time. Do you know how fast Twitters go by? Yes. <laughs> like I know. They're, I they're follow going, you. I get them. I know, but if you follow more than 400 people, you can't keep up with that stuff. I like know, it's. But I pay attention I'm to like. I, I feel like I'm going through like 55 pages. This was posted 30 seconds ago. I'm like, oh my god. I, yeah. There's no way I'm going to get back to three hours. So, <laughs> it's an interesting format. I don't know if it's serving society anything of use. Or cultural value, but, but it's really fun. But here's what's interesting about about what you do is that so you have some fun and you do this stuff. But then here's a post you put up uh, at the end of December. It said, "Went to see my brother in jail today. Talked to Anne Murray. Ate gnocchi. Laughed with my mom. Watched Dad in the yard. Good day. Amen." Mm -hmm. It's your whole life right there, man. Oh, it was an interesting day. And when I got home and sat on the couch after you know having had experienced, I just thought that's a lot can happen in the course of a day. So I think in that way, you know, it is an interesting, you know, and I don't know why I write it down, but I, I, why do you write songs? I mean, the same thing, but I think it's a wonderful format. My favorite Twitter, and I don't know why you didn't find this, because it was only like 4,000 twits ago. <laughs> oh, by uh, the way, just so you care, and this is how many Twitters she's, she's got 9,700 followers, 5,200 posts. It's like, Is I, that bad? Uh, no, it's just, you're twitting, you're twitting a oh, lot. Okay. I'm twitting with my ass right now. Are you? <laughs> Well, um, you do talk a lot about your body on these tweets as well. Wait, which is which is the I one? I mean, it's meant to be funny, honestly. People have heard pretty much everything under the sun. I'm thinking of making a sex tape. <laughs> November 15th, 2.44 a.m. Then you added, okay, maybe not. No, and, and, and the other version of that is I, you know, I'm thinking of making a, tech, a sex tape. The only problem is I'll be the only person in it. <laughs> So, I don't believe you. But one of my favorites is uh, I got a tattoo of Canada on my arse, and every time I fart, Quebec separates. <laughs> Record is called Freeze. Jan Arden, everyone.